Welcome to another episode of InRange. I'm here to talk to you today about the Schofield Revolver. Now, I've talked about the Schofield Revolver quite a few times here on InRange already, and I have a few videos about the Smith & Wesson Performance Center reissue that they made in the year 2000. And I just recently acquired this one from Uberti, imported by Cimarron, and I wanted to do a video about it because, quite honestly, I'm pretty surprised. The original Uberti manufacturer Schofields that they started doing many years ago had a lot of problems. But I've heard that those have been fixed, so I acquired this, and I actually like this better than the Smith & Wesson Performance Center model. This is actually a much more historically accurate version of the gun, and I'm going to also do some shooting here for you in just a moment. So the Schofield was released in 1875 and was adopted by the military uh, with a 7.5 inch barrel, not this 5 inch barrel, and it actually was a very good revolver with the exception of one thing. When Smith & Wesson made it, they chambered it in something called 45 Smith & Wesson, or 45 Schofield, which was a slightly shorter cartridge case than this 45 Colt that I have right here. And as a result, when they started putting these in the field, supply chain issues immediately started ensuing, as there were some soldiers that had single-action army Colts in 45 Colt, and some soldiers that were issued Schofields in 45 Smith & Wesson. And of course, as the military is apt to do, they sent the 45 Schofield ammunition to the guys with Colts, and they sent the Colt 45 Colt ammunition to the guys with Schofields. And because the 45 Colt is longer than 45 Schofield, they could not chamber them in the Schofield, but the 45 Schofield, or Smith & Wesson ammunition, would work in the 45 Colt. That actually turned out to be a thing in that they adopted the 45 Schofield cartridge as the official military cartridge in 1877 and dropped 45 Colt. That's a topic for another day and there is already a video on the channel about that. So as a result, these guns fell out of favor with the military and they pretty much surplus them out or let some of the men take them home. Wells Fargo bought a number of these and cut them down to 5 inches and this would be sort of a Wells Fargo edition Schofield. So, the the Performance Center reissue that I have from Smith & Wesson is chambered in 45 Schofield. They did that part right. However, they have a transfer bar safety and frame-mounted firing pin, things that were not historically accurate, probably because of the lawyers, um, and a couple other things which we can talk about in a video about that. So when I got this Uberti, first of all, I was very happy to see that it has a proper firing pin. It, hasn't, it doesn't have any safety on it that wasn't historically there, at least though that I'm not aware of. So as a result, this performs and functions like the original. Now, one thing Uberti did is they copied the later model of the Schofield. There were a couple of versions or generations of the Schofield revolver, and this would be the latest, most improved model. So, but the other thing they did, which is actually really cool from a performance perspective, but not historicity, is they chambered it in 45 Colt which is what Smith & Wesson should have done right from the beginning. So as a result, they just lengthened the cylinder a little bit, and of course the metallurgy is there, and this can now fire 45 Colt, which makes this a much easier gun to fire in the modern era that we're in today. The thing they did is they just modified it by change it, lengthening the cylinder and removing something right here, which is sometimes called the gas, gas seal or gas ring. And removing that gas ring means that, in theory, at least I've read online, that these Uberti reproductions cannot handle black powder like the originals could. Even the originals were a little iffy compared to the Colt, but because of the removal of this gas ring, these reproductions can't handle black powder much at all. In fact, they bind up in just a couple cylinders worth of ammunition. Well, I have a whole bunch of black powder 45 Colt here with me. Makes it easy to load because this one's in 45 Colt, and I'm going to find out if this gun can handle black powder. So first, let's go ahead and load. So one of the cool things about this is you put it on a half cock, open the action open, and I've got a little pouch here full of ammunition. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if you were using this in the old day, you would probably not close it with on a loaded chamber. You would have only five rounds loaded, but for today, we're going to load all six. So here's the first six rounds of black powder. No problems with that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and eject those, which is the benefit of the Schofield. And let's go ahead and put a couple more rounds in here. So first six rounds, no problems with black powder. Cylinder seems to spin freely. I don't have any fouling issues that are preventing it from working. And let's close her back up. All right, here's another six rounds. She's seizing up. She is seizing up. Ugh. All 
All right, so we're finding some reality to this. Let's go ahead and eject these. Go ahead and, hmm, yep, starting to bind. So there's some truth to this being not really viable for black powder. I'm just gonna spray it down with a little bit of moose milk. And clean that off. See if she'll spin. Yep, she spins again. See, it doesn't take much. It's just that stuff gets in there. So what happens is the black powder coming out here gets under the cylinder and onto the arbor with nothing to prevent it from getting in there. And so as a result, you get this, uh, this fouling issue. All right, she's spinning again. This, I think this is gonna be our last six rounds of black powder. 45 Colt out of this, but then I'll do another video someday trying some other types of propellant Maybe like I said Blackhorn 209 or something like that which tends to produce less fouling than the real thing and see if we see a difference But uh, let's go with six more rounds And uh, go from there Again the first cylinder is just fine I wonder what's the deal with that as you can see, unloading this is much faster than a single action army. Let's see, let's go for broke. One more cylinder. Just wasting ammo here, but are we? This is science, right? Let me tell you, this gun is incredibly beautifully manufactured. I really like it. Even if I can't shoot black powder out of it, it doesn't make me sad about my purchase whatsoever. Right off the bat, first, first round. I was able to get through it that time. Oh, that was five, excuse me, lost count. Wonder, there might be some experimentation to go on here with lube. I'm just gonna turn that again. Let's just give it one more round, because why not? This time I'll try to get all six instead of losing count and doing five. But let me repeat, this is a beautifully manufactured reproduction. If you're gonna shoot smokeless ammunition out of this, you cannot go wrong. This gun's been very reliable. It's really nicely made, um, and I said it. I actually like it better than the Smith and Wesson. All right, if I help it for the first round. No, nope. here we go. Well, not terrible, but not great. Certainly not what I would call reliable. Ooh, boy, black powder does get hot. So at any rate, close up. There we go. This is a really cool revolver. You'll see more of it on the channel, probably with smokeless ammunition. But I'm going to try it again with some other propellant other than true black and see if we see a difference. Might also experiment with some lube or maybe even trying to put a little O-ring in there or something to modify this to uh, stop that from getting into the arbor. So this is actually the same location the next day in the morning and I kind of hard cut here because I wanted to not leave this hanging. I was curious if a modern black powder replacement um, would work better than actual black. And of the modern black powder replacements, the one that produces the least fouling from my experience is a product called Blackhorn 209. It's technically a muzzle loading propellant, but it can be used as a black powder replacement. Your mileage may vary. Be careful with what you're doing with your loads. It is more on the side of a modern propellant than a black powder replacement, but it definitely has low data for cartridges like 45 Colt, 45 Schofield, etc. And it is used for as a black powder replacement in many instances. Um, I don't think that cowboy action shooting rules allow it, whatever. It does produce a little less smoke than uh, a lot of the other traditional black powder replacements like Pyrodex and 777. But being that my experience with Blackhorn 209 is that it produces the least amount of fouling, I thought I'd be curious to try it out. So I went home and immediately started loading up some cartridges with Blackhorn 209 to see if we get through more than one cylinder today. Now, these are actually 45 Schofield cartridges, not 45 Colt. It's an example that you can load 45 Schofield in a 45 Colt chamber. But again, this is the same bullet but with Blackhorn 209, black powder alternative. Let's see if this works better. Yeah, that's better, and that was five rounds. Keep doing that. Guess I'm used to cowboy. 
that was good. Now, that we, as we saw with real black powder, we went through five rounds or six rounds, no problem, but it was when we reloaded that it didn't work. So here we are. This will be our second cylinder of uh, ammunition with Blackhorn 209. And uh, I was right. This is, if you want black powder style uh, shooting with a Uberti Schofield reproduction, it appears Blackhorn 209 is your answer. It's a little bit on the expensive side, still produces a lot of cool smoke, gives you a similar effect, but it appears to be running. Oh yeah, that's now two cylinders without fouling problems. Let's go ahead and do one more, and if we get through 18 rounds without the gun seizing up, I'm going to go ahead and say that Blackhorn 209 is the solution for a black powder style shooting experience with a Schofield reproduction. Yeah, I lost count. And that's it! Blackhorn 209 is the answer. Sweet. One quick addendum, with every black powder alternative on the market you'll sometimes see claims about how it's not corrosive or it's not as corrosive as original black powder. And uh, you'll see that claim about Blackhorn 209 and let me go ahead and tell you that that is incorrect. Blackhorn 209 is absolutely corrosive and I've tested that on a barrel I really didn't care about and a gun I didn't care about, just left it for a little while. And uh, significant rust if you don't clean immediately. You clean with Blackhorn 209 just as you do with tr traditional black powder, just using hot water and ballastol is just fine. But if you decide to use Blackhorn 209 to give yourself a black powder uh, type experience in a Schofield that would not run with regular black powder, make sure you clean with standard black powder protocols. Uberti and Cimarron importing this has done a beautiful job of bringing this reproduction to the market. Quite honestly, of course, smokeless ammunition is far more convenient anyway. This is just for us history nerds, right? So also, I want to thank everyone out there in the channel and Patreon supporters that make it possible to do videos like this. Every round you see fired, this gun, all that ammunition, the black powder, the bullets, everything is because of supporters for, like you. There's no sponsorship for this channel. Cimarron didn't send me this gun. Uberti did not send me this gun. I purchased it. There's going to be more content about it, but that's completely because of Patreon supporters. No masters, no gods, no overlords. If you, if you can't, I do understand, please consider just supporting the channel in a different way. Subscribe, but even more importantly, share with your friends if you like this kind of content, because the YouTube algorithm doesn't favor demonetized content like me. Thanks for watching.